Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Gorgeous, a Hong Kong action comedy romance film from 1999 that stars Jackie Chan and Shu Chi. Uh, young and beautiful Boo, played by Shu Chi, finds a romantic message in a bottle near her family restaurant in Taiwan. On a whim, she flies to Hong Kong to meet her potential soulmate, who turns out to be Albert, played by Tony Lung, a gay beautician pining for his ex. Taking pity on the girl, he brings her to his workplace, where he, uh, she falls for the wealthy and lonely C.N. Chan, played by Jackie Chan. But when Chan's lifelong enemy, Lo, discovers he has a new love, he decides to ruin their happiness. Now, if you've been following my channel for some time, you may have noticed I'm a bit of a runtime snob. You know, I tend to reference abnormally long runtimes uh, for movies I review, and then I usually proceed to complain about them in the review. And this is because, you know, in my opinion, most movies over two hours long do not earn their lengths, which typically results in some dull patches and pacing issues. So, what does this have to do with Gorgeous? Well, I saw this movie one time years ago, but I remembered that it had some pacing issues. Still, I felt like watching it again and doing a review, so I picked up the recent Blu-ray release and noticed a whopping runtime of two full hours. And surely, that's why I felt it was too long the first time around, right? But then I noticed that that's the Hong Kong cut. The Hong Kong cut is two full hours. The international cut is 20 minutes shorter, and that's the one I watched back in the day. So I was a little bit concerned that I was about to watch a longer cut of a film that I thought was too long to begin with. But, uh, you know, it, it definitely had some filler nonsense back in the day, so I was going to, into this with a little bit of trepidation. But in any case, the film kind of begins with Shu Chi doing an innocent country bumpkin impression. She mugs for the camera, talks to dolphins while cheesy music plays. It's, it's pure schmaltz, like it really is. But, you know, she's cute and kind of likable. She seems like a kind-hearted soul, at least, as a character. Meanwhile, you know, Jackie's like wheeling and dealing big money deals, huge financial plays like a boss. You know, he's a womanizer, all that good stuff. And these two characters eventually meet and have like awkward interactions with each other, with Jackie playing like the straight-laced guy and Shu playing the naive, fish-out-of-water, like, country girl who's living the high life for the first time. Now, I do like Jackie's performance in this movie, actually. He's playing, like, a, a serious role, but kind of balanced, you know? Uh, Tony Lung has a supporting role, as I mentioned, but he definitely hams it up at times. You know, there's an, there's an elevator scene that's, like, really cheesy, but he's such a great actor that he somehow makes it work pretty well. Now, the comedy in this film is mostly mediocre, probably because it relies on being, I don't even know what you would call it, silly and schmaltzy, really. Uh, there's a scene where Shu hides in a refrigerator, and that gag probably goes on for a bit too long. You know, the, the comedy overall is just not that great, although I did laugh at the excessively large wine goblets. Uh, they're having dinner one night, and all of a sudden they're drinking out of these, like, gigantic wine goblets. And I did laugh at that. Probably the funniest visual gag in the film. Uh, there are a few cameos and supporting roles that surprised me that I found amusing. You know, all in all, though, like, the, the romantic comedy stuff does feel kind of like filler in this. But it avoids being too obnoxious. So it's kind of watchable, I guess. But there are times where you'll definitely be uh, looking at your watch, being like, okay, when's, when's the next action scene coming? You know, that's definitely a problem. Uh, yeah, so the runtime really doesn't help. Now, in my opinion, they should have focused on the competitive dynamic between the guys. You know, there are moments during the second half that became a little bit more interesting. And uh, you basically have this fire of competition subplot between the male characters, which is like the true motivation for the main conflict that pops up. And it pushes the characters to like improve themselves and stay on their game and be the best versions of, the, of themselves that they can be. And that should have been the focus of the story. You know, maybe some additional dialogue scenes between, you know, Jackie and his rival, as well as the Caucasian dude who shows up who's hired to fight him. 
You know, they definitely had something to work with there. If the film revolved around that, I think it would have been more interesting. But this is an action comedy romance, so we have to talk about the action. Now, due to all the filler material in this, there are only four fights in the entire film. The first two are fairly short. You know, the first fight takes place on a, a boat, almost like a small yacht, and uh, has some traditional Jackie Chan choreography, which is good, but not that impressive because we've seen better versions of this fight in his other films. The second fight is better. It's actually pretty sweet. It involves Jackie and a group of thugs in masks, and they incorporate baseball bats uh, in ways that were pretty neat. And I was impressed with some of the moves in that fight. You know, Jackie at this point in his career is still athletic enough to sell a fight, and he does it here. So I thought that was a good scene. And then we get the Australian boxer who shows up, played by Brad Allen. And once he makes his first appearance, the movie just takes a sharp turn for the better. You know, you get a very good kickboxing match between him and Jackie. It takes place outside... They put on gloves because it's kind of like an honorable uh, duel, so to speak. And the choreography is just a mix of punches and kicks. No weaponry or anything like that. But the execution's very solid, I thought. There are some shots that go on for quite a while, uncut. So it's, it's a good fight. And then you get 20 or so minutes of filler again. And then you have a rematch between the two at the end. Which could even be better than that fight. Uh, my only slight criticism, it seemed like there was a bit of undercranking. Uh, maybe especially in the final fight, it seemed like, uh, to make the actors seem a little bit faster, but uh, not uh, not a huge problem. It was still fun to watch. So I would say, I mean, overall gorgeous. It's a sufficiently entertaining movie that limits itself by having too much schmaltzy romantic comedy fluff. And that's what you get in this. I basically would give it, like, the same like overall score or uh, you know overall recommendation status that I would have you know 15 years ago or whenever I first saw it. So I, I moderately recommend this. You know you, you might have a little bit of trouble sitting through the fluff, but the fights deliver quite well, I think. And it's currently available on Blu-ray from 88 films. And as always folks, I'll see you next time.